Hi guys, today we're going to be looking at our Newcastle County Down case study as part of Unit 1 Theme B, Coastal Environments and specifically Coastal Management Strategies in the British Isles. If we zoom in here and look at the CSPEC, pupils must be able to investigate one study of a coastal management for the British Isles and evaluate the coastal management strategies used referring to the principles of sustainable development. So that's what we're going to work through over the next five minutes or so. As you can see here on our map, Newcastle is located to the southeast of Northern Ireland. Newcastle is most well known for its tourism. It started as early as 1869 when the first train was introduced from Belfast, um, shortening the journey to less than an hour, making it accessible and um, giving people access to the beaches and the tourist facilities on offer. Now um, it's still primarily a tourist destination and its population increases by 15,000 in summer months due to tourism. We're now going to move to look then at what coastal management strategies have been used in Newcastle. Uh, to fully answer potential exam questions, it's important to know one strategy in great detail, and then several others uh, in slightly less detail for a slightly longer question. For the purpose of the booklet, I'm going to focus on seawalls, groins and gabions. Now, if we look over here, this photo gives us a good overview of Newcastle. Uh, here we can see its layout. The tourist central area is around here. You can see the moorings in the background. Um, we can see here are three strategies that we're going to discuss. We can see very clearly here the rock armour at the front. We can see slightly less clearly the gabions over here on both sides of the river Shimna as it approaches its mouth. And we can see here to the northwest the seawall that runs along the promenade. Uh, above the beach. The first strategy we're going to discuss will be our sea walls, we can see here. Uh, the sea wall is a hard engineering strategy. It was originally constructed to protect the boarding houses during the Victorian period um, and it was a flat sea wall. Now the, there is a curved sea wall. It was replaced, the original wall was replaced in 2002 following damage from a storm. Uh, the new wall cost four million pounds and increased height by one meter. The new wall also supports the promenade. You can see here uh, in the photo below. The promenade is here, people walk along, a uh, good recreational area, and the wall, the curtsy wall is to the left, dropping down this side. The design of the curtsy wall is intended to reduce the erosion on the wall uh, and make it more sustainable in the long term. However, some issues have appeared with that and the curved wall is now deflecting the wave energy back down the beach and that is causing erosion of the beach and causing the beach to lose material which is unsustainable in the future. The next strategy we're going to look at are our gabions. Our gabions, as I said before, can be seen here on both sides of the river Shimna as it gets towards its mouth. Uh, gabions are wire cages filled with rocks. These are more sustainable as they deflect and dissipate wave energy, allowing the waters to flow back through the gaps in the rocks and run back into the sea. Uh, they protect the recreational area, we can see here. There are a variety of uh, cafes and stuff over this side. Um, the first set of gabions was badly decayed and had to be replaced in 2006, so that is a downside to sustainability. However, they should be more sustainable in the long term if they are made correctly. Because they're not going to be broken up by the way of energy, they can deflect and dissipate it. Our next strategy will then be our groins. You can see here. And here is a picture. Now, our groins are um, wooden or concrete structures that sit at right angles to the beach. They are primarily to prevent transportation of material via longshore drift. In Newcastle, longshore drift comes from the southeast. So it pushes material up the beach this way. This obviously creates a problem if the material is being moved away from the town centre and the promenade area where tourists will be looking for an attractive beach. Uh, what the Longshore Drift does do is create the beautiful beaches over this side at Murloc Bay and create sand dune formations there. So by including uh, groins, we are taking away potentially from the sand reaching Murloc Bay. The groins you can see here um, in this picture, I've been here since 1980. Obviously, they are in a very poor state of repair. Um, at the minute, the council is trying to decide whether it's worthwhile installing new wooden groins, as you can see here. 
You can also see this in your uh, case study booklet. Every growing metre gain be 20 to 30 metres long and would cost £1,250 per metre. It has to be questioned whether the cost of that is sustainable and you can consider that in your evaluation. We're now going to move to look at what sort of exam questions are most likely for this case study. Um, generally, it could be it would be an evaluation style question. Um, you can see this information again in your case study booklet. Now, what we can see here, there are two particular types of questions to keep an eye out for. The first question asks for a strategy, singular. So you have to pick a, a coastal defence, whether it be seawall, a gabion, or groins, or rock armour, and construct an answer with enough information to get eight or nine marks with only one strategy. If the question asks for strategies, plural, you can write a bit more than one. That will obviously be a bit easier as you won't need to go into as much depth uh, on one particular strategy. The example we're going to look at specifically is in the 2018 specimen paper, so it's a good indicator. And it says, with reference to a case study from the British Isles, evaluate the sustainability of a coastal management strategy you have studied. Now, keywords in this question, evaluate, sustainability, and strategy, singular. We want to use all those in, in our answer. You can see here my breakdown of the structure. The first thing we have is introduction. Introduction, refer early on to your case study name. If you forget that, you'll be limited to level one. Um, and then within that, put in two or three specific facts or figures. The next segment then is an example of your strategy and how it works. So state your strategy early on. In this case, I've gone for seawall um, because I think the most information is available for that one. But equally, you can pick whichever you want. State that it's a hard engineering strategy and a little bit of the history, again, including specific facts and figures where possible. Um, we'll then consider, as you can see in the purple here, the sustainable aspect of the question. Is your strategy sustainable? So take a new paragraph, and the outcome here will be it's not sustainable generally. And then there's a little bit extra from the textbook on page 49 that helps to back this up. The last part, and the easiest part to forget, is a conclusion. Give your own opinion. Um, generally, if you can justify your opinion, it doesn't matter if you are for or against, or say it's sustainable or not sustainable, but I would suggest in this case study, uh, the majority of your responses will be to say it is not sustainable. And a nice way to finish then is to suggest alternatives. For example, I said here, a soft engineering strategy like beach nourishment could be considered as an alternative.